Welcome back. The GSD opposition said this week it's been vindicated by the Dr. Heraldi Home Report and described the public inquiry as politically motivated. The party said the GSOP Liberal's refusal to believe the word of Gibraltar's highest authorities, like the Royal Gibraltar Police, who investigated the more serious allegations, was an utter disgrace. It said the public will decide whether the £2.6 million spent on this exercise will be deemed worth it. Jonathan Sacramento spoke to the leader of the opposition, Daniel Featham. The GSD, not only the GSD, but also the RGP and also the Attorney General and the Chief Minister of the day were absolutely right and have been vindicated by this report in telling the people of Gibraltar, both in Parliament and outside it, on numerous occasions that these allegations were unfounded. And despite the fact that all those institutions were telling the people of Gibraltar that there was nothing in these allegations, the GSOP as an institution, as a political party, we can't just simply point the cannons, we can't point the criticism at Mr. Vosano, wrong as he was for participating in the Espejo Público programme in Spain, but the GSLP as a party from top to bottom just participated in a systematic onslaught against the Dr. Heraldi home, the staff of the Dr. Heraldi home, because let's not, affect the, let's not forget that they had been very, very badly affected and their families too, and also uh, to the detriment of, of Gibraltar and the care services of Gibraltar. I mean, complete and utter disregard, systematically using the Dr. Hiraldi issue for political ends. And I think that's shameful, and it's probably one of the most shameful episodes in Gibraltar politics. What do you think should happen now? Should there be any further action? Absolutely. I think that Mr. Picardo should now, as leader of the GSOP, write to the Antena 3, the authors of the Espejo Público program, and basically tell them that there's been a public inquiry and that the allegations that were made by members of his party on Spanish television were completely, utterly unfounded. I think that the MPs that are members of the government front bench who participate in that program should also issue a public apology. I mean, that's the least that they could do for dragging the reputation of both the staff and Dr. Hiraldi home through the mud. What's the and most also, they could do? And also, I think that the, 30, the allegations by the 35 trainees that are still pending for over a year now, for over a year now against Joanna Hernandez, that that should be expedited because there is absolutely no excuse for those allegations not to have been investigated uh, um, as expeditiously as they ought to. I mean, these are very serious allegations, and there they are. We still haven't seen a conclusion, and I think that the government now ought to focus on that. And as to Joanna Hernandez, who has accused you in the past with uh, being obsessed with her? If uh, what is happening over the, uh, over the uh, social media over the weekend is anything to go by, I mean, you know, uh, Joanna Hernandez really needs to look at herself in the mirror and needs to take stock and take a step back. And I think that anybody that now associates themselves with the comments made by Joanna Hernandez, who continues her pursuit of effectively people who have been exonerated, the staff at Dr. Hiraldi home, who have for years li lived under this huge, huge shadow themselves, their families. I mean, I've spoken to staff at Dr. Hiraldi home, and they have been under immense stress, under immense pressure, and yet she continues and continues, despite the fact she got what she wanted, a, a, a public inquiry, and that public inquiry by a very senior judge found there was nothing to these allegations. Changes designed to address traffic problems during drop-off and pick-up at St. Joseph's School have received mixed reviews on day one. The pilot scheme has been introduced as part of the government's sustainable traffic, transport and parking plan. With a total of some 800 children leaving St. Joseph's primary and middle schools in the space of 15 minutes, gridlock between 3.15 and 3.30 is not an uncommon sight. But this afternoon's traffic jam occurred despite the implementation of a pilot scheme designed to go some way to addressing such congestion problems. 30 parking spaces are now being reserved for parents and carers for drop-off and pick-up between 8.30 in the morning and 4 in the afternoon. 
Uh, it's gone quite well. For the first day, um, you know, we've had very minor teething problems. Uh, we've uh, just had to tell a few of the parents, you know, uh, just to move their cars around a bit uh, to fit them in. But all in all, great. You know, uh, like I say, it's the first day, so we were expecting more teething problems, but it's gone quite smoothly. It's been quite good. But there was a, a short period of gridlock. There was, and I, I'd put it down to a, a bit of an attentive driver in that they blocked the, the junction so the cars that were trying to filter through couldn't get through because obviously the car was in the way. Uh, but, I mean, once the, the drivers start to get the idea, um, um, we shouldn't have a problem. We'll probably tweak the area a bit and request that we have a keep clear box painted at the junction so that you know, drivers have a visual reminder that they need to keep that area clear so we can get cars filtering through but beyond that I mean that was what a couple of minutes uh, we managed to just move them back a bit and and get the cars through. Obviously teething problems are to be expected when you make a change of this nature but you sound quite optimistic that it will work. Yeah look this is not the first time that we've done a pickup drop-off we implemented one at the Bishop Fisher Governor's Meadow School and also at St Mary's we had uh, minor issues there but you know once the parents realized what the situation was and what was required of them. Uh, like I say, you know, it's, it's never perfect because there's always the odd driver that insists on uh, not complying by the signs and, and, and what, what the whole area is meant for. But, you know, 95% of the times it, it works problem-free and uh, we haven't had any complaints from the parents. Thank you very much, first and foremost, because you have helped. Um, Please try and avoid the area. What we're trying to do is uh, do away with uh, what's been happening in the past where parents have come an hour, an hour and a half before, uh, you know, to be able to secure themselves a parking to pick up their children. Uh, I don't think there's a need for that now. There's plenty of space. Come at the time when the child is going to come out of school, uh, you know, just pick them up, get in the car, move away so that another parent uh, can make use of it. And if everybody helps, this will flow like uh, every other pick up drop off and I think that uh, you know we'll, we'll find that the bus service will actually be able to get here and get out uh, which will improve the bus service at the same time and emergency vehicles and if they have to respond to an incident uh, further up into the Edinburgh Arms area that kind of thing uh, they should be able to get through. Speaking to GBC some parents dismissed the pilot scheme as a rubbish idea while others were hopeful that, despite some teething problems, it could, with time, improve the situation. Meanwhile, St. Joseph's was closed down Thursday due to intense flooding. Teachers and assistants at the school put arrangements in place, and all 800 children were collected by parents within an hour of the school having officially opened in the morning. When teachers turned up for work this morning, The main corridors were under six inches of water, which was seeping into the classrooms. Under the direction of the head teachers, they quickly mobilized to intercept parents who were dropping children off. Well, luckily the children weren't in yet, but as they arrived with their parents, being younger children, they did arrive with parents. We arrived in the understanding of the parents to see what was happening and cooperate by taking the children home. As far as the middle school is concerned, obviously, we have all the pupils. Many of them make their own way to school. And so we had um, various, various approaches. We had several teachers um, in the drop-off area advising parents who were able to, to take their children back home. Uh, those children who had been dropped off already, we made sure that they were catered for under shelter. We allocated specific classes away from the problem to make sure that all the children were housed safely. And then we, be, we began the process of phoning um, the parents or guardians of, of each child one by one, making sure that there was somebody to um, either they were, were to be collected from school or they had permission to make their own way home, and, ob- and obviously making sure that uh, there was someone uh, at home to, to receive them. Um, and at the same time, trying to get the message to the wider community through yourselves and, and the media to uh, try and, and intercept parents who were perhaps making their journey uh, into school to turn back and, and make arrangements to, to keep their children at home. On advice from the fire and rescue service, the school was closed. Then the source of the problem was tackled. Technical services and GJBS discovered that drains running under the main corridors had been put under strain by intense rain and overflowed. A historic buildup of sediment had to be unblocked from the drains before they were seen to be operating normally again. Certainly, from, from our point of view, we'd like to thank all the agencies involved. 
um, and uh, especially the um, members of staff um, and ciliary staff, cleaners, caretakers, and uh, obviously not forgetting the parents. Um, we can't thank the parents enough. They have been very understanding. Uh, it was very reactive um, in the morning. We, we we could not anticipate this this problem. We had to react to it. Um, when we when we arrived, and I think that the parents have been wonderful, uh, been able on very short notice to take the children home, come and collect them, uh, and uh, I'd like to thank them and, and also obviously apologise for any inconvenience that that this problem ha has caused. Thank you to the parents. Thank you to everyone. Everyone's been brilliant. A statement from the Department of Education says there will be ongoing works over the weekend, and assessments will be carried out to ensure that no major damage has been caused to the building. The school should be open on Monday. Ocean Village Investments Limited is applying for planning permission to construct a number of amenities as well as 126 small short stay and rental apartments. Ocean Village will also be taking plans to the Development and Planning Commission for the building of secure super yacht berthing facilities, port reporting offices, visiting yachtsman facilities a workshop and a storage area. All of these, including the apartments, will be constructed on stilts. The public can inspect the application and plans over the following week. Gibraltar FA President Desmond Riuk this week announced he'd resigned, citing personal reasons. Vice President Michael Yammers QC will take over until an EGM is held to elect a long-term successor. In a statement, Desmond Riok says that after three years within the GFA Council and the best part of two years as president, he's decided it's the right time to step down and hand over the reins to somebody else. Mr Riok says it's been an honour to be the GFA president, overseeing significant milestones in the history of local football, such as Gibraltar's first ever international against Slovakia, its first ever international victory against Malta, and Champions League and Europa League football being played on the rock. The outgoing president thanks all of those who've supported him in his time in post, which he says is the undoubted pinnacle of his lifelong involvement in local football. Mr Riot goes on to say he'll always be a huge supporter of Gibraltar FA, wishing his successor and the GFA all the very best for the future. For its part, the Gibraltar FA has thanked Mr Riot for all his hard work as president and for his lifelong dedication to Gibraltarian football. The date for an extraordinary general meeting to elect his successor is not yet known. And that's all for News Review. For more, you can head over to our website, gbc.gi forward slash news. And you can also find us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you very much for watching. From the team, good night.